Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we've got a lot of Apple news to talk about. Even after the iPhone X's release, you won't believe it, we're already hearing rumors about the iPhone X Plus. Bloomberg has shared some more information about a new iPad Pro in addition to an Apple augmented reality headset. Lots to get into, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to talk about the iPhone X Plus. I just got this on launch day on November 3rd, my favorite phone that I've ever used. If you guys happen to miss my review, I'll leave it linked up here in the top left-hand corner of the screen, but it's a great device. And a lot of people, when they saw this, said, yeah, the screen is big, 5.8 inches, the biggest on an iPhone ever, but what if we want something bigger? And it appears that Apple's already incorporated that into their plans for the next iPhone because in 2019, Apple was reported to be releasing three new iPhones according to KGI Securities. The iPhone release model is gonna be very similar to 2017, like what they did this year, only it's gonna be a little flipped. So this year they did two lower end iPhone models, lower end in quotes because they're still really expensive, and then one really high end model. In 2019, Apple's gonna be releasing two high-end iPhone 10s and one lower-end LCD model. According to KGI Securities, in 2018, these are going to be the three sizes of the three new iPhones. There's going to be a 6.1-inch new LCD iPhone in the body and design style of an iPhone 10. We've got a 5.8-inch OLED iPhone 10. That's the exact same size and form factor as this iPhone right here. And there's also going to be a 6.5-inch massive screened iPhone 10 Plus. After all the phones that have come out in 2017, the LG G6, the Samsung Galaxy S8, the Samsung Note 8, the OnePlus 5T, the iPhone 10, everything is leaning towards that bezel-less future that we've envisioned for so long. And in 2018 from Apple, that's pretty much how all of the iPhones are gonna look. Rather than having those huge bezels like we saw on the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 8 Plus, it's all gonna be the almost bezel-less design that we've seen with the iPhone 10, which I'm so excited for. Another thing that I'm really excited about is gonna be the price of the LCD iPhone next year. Rather than all the phones being over a thousand dollars, it's going to be about the same price as the iPhone 8 from this year, between 649 and 749. Once again, according to KGI Security. So if you want that iPhone 10 form factor, but you don't want to pay a thousand dollars, maybe wait till next year and you'll get an LCD iPhone with a really clean design. It's always crazy to me that we're hearing information about next year's iPhones two weeks after this year's iPhone was released. But that's the way that the rumor mill works. What I'm fascinated to see is what Apple's gonna call these devices. Because this year they totally changed up their traditional naming scheme rather than doing something like the iPhone 7S, and then this was supposed to be called the iPhone 8, if you remember those rumors. They went from the iPhone 8 for the lower end iPhone models for 2017 and the iPhone 10 for this ultra premium thousand dollar plus model. So next year they're gonna do the iPhone 10 like squared or the iPhone 10 too. That really wouldn't make sense because they're using Roman numerals. Maybe they'll skip to Roman numerals for 11. Do you even think that there'll be an iPhone called the iPhone 9? So many questions for this. Maybe they'll do something simpler like the new iPhone and then the new, new iPhone 10 iPhones. I don't know. I want to hear you guys' thoughts about this down below in the comment section because I have absolutely no idea what the next iPhones will be called, but maybe you do. So KGI Securities has reported on the 2018 iPhones, but Bloomberg has some intel on the 2019 iPhones. Apple is reportedly working on this new 3D laser scanning system for the rear camera on that iPhone. I guess it would be like the iPhone 12. Let's just call it the 2019 iPhone. As Bloomberg noted in their article, one of the biggest problems with AR right now that I've experienced myself is that it doesn't do particularly well when it comes to measuring and dealing with vertical planes, like a door or a wall in front of you, something parallel when the camera would be held like this. It doesn't do the best because the cameras that are on the iPhones just can't read it super well. With this new laser tech, it would be able to more accurately understand all of the planes in the side of the camera, whether it be horizontal or vertical vertical, and it would make using AR a lot better. I think AR is cool. I had so much hope for it when I was covering like top 10 AR demos during the iOS 11 beta cycle, but my interest for AR kind of dropped off after I downloaded my first AR app. It was a measuring app, and it just wasn't super accurate. Hopefully with the 2019 iPhone, this laser technology will help it become more accurate, but right now it really feels like a work in progress. And I think that's what the first version of AR kit on iOS 11 is. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's not supposed to be amazing. It's supposed to be a step for Apple to start building this massive AR platform to change the way we interact with things in the future. And I hope that that's true. Tim Cook especially has said time and time again that he believes in the future of AR. He talks about it on earnings calls to investors. It's something that Apple is really 
focusing on that they're investing a lot of time and energy into so they clearly believe in its future right now it just has some issues and i don't really see myself using it more than once every blue moon moving back to 2018 bloomberg has also been sharing some information recently about the forthcoming ipad pro i bought the 10.5 inch ipad pro back in June or July when it came out this year. I know it was announced at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference in June, but it's this incredible tablet device. It has an insane 120 hertz refresh rate display, same cameras that were on the iPhone 7, and all around the 10.5 inch size just feels perfect for a tablet. 12.9 inch for me is a little bit too big, and the 9.7 inch model, which was then replaced by the 10.5 inch, felt a little bit too small. But I really love this device. I use it to watch YouTube videos all the time, and it just provides a little bit of a bigger experience than what you get with iOS on an iPhone model. Bloomberg has reported that with the 2018 iPad, it's going to feature a nearly bezel-less design like the iPhone 10, which I'm so excited to see because a bezel-less design is one thing on something like an iPhone with a 5.8 inch display. Imagine that with a huge panel, like a 10.5 inch panel or 12.9 inch panel on the next iPad Pros. It would look incredible. The only thing that I'm really sad to report is that apparently it's not gonna be an OLED panel. Bloomberg says that suppliers just do not have the resources to manufacture millions of these panels for the iPhone, let alone millions of these 10.5 and 12.9 inch panels for iPads. I mean, the production and manufacturing process for those would be absolutely insane. And it's one of those things where Apple can't do something because the technology in place literally isn't there yet. Like they can't make production for these huge panels go any faster or get any more efficient just yet. That's a supply chain issue. We've already seen some amazing concepts for these 2018 iPad models and it looks incredible. I want to get my hands on one right now. Something that I would like to see from the iPads in the future is to switch to a glass back like Apple did with the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. I just think it looks so much nicer and feels so much more premium than aluminum. But Bloomberg is also reporting that with this bezel-less design similar to the iPhone 10, there's not going to be a home button and Face ID will be making its way to the iPad sometime next year. There are a lot of people that just don't get Face ID yet that don't trust it, but from my experience, it's been incredible. You just hold the phone up, look at it, and it unlocks just like that. And then you can swipe up and go back to whatever you were doing before. I am very excited to see it come to the iPad. I don't know if a lot of other people are, but I will take a bezel-less design in Face ID any day over thicker bezels and Touch ID. Alongside the new iPad in 2018, Apple is also working to introduce a new version of the Apple Pencil. Now this is a product that I tried for three days once and then wound up returning because it's a hundred bucks. It's pretty expensive for a pencil and something that I would only use maybe once or twice a month because I'm not an artist and I take all my notes either handwritten or typing them on my computer. But if you want a new Apple Pencil, there is a new version coming in 2018. We don't know what will be new with that, but I was trying to think about what Apple could improve upon and the only things that came to my mind so far were better battery life and lowering the latency interaction time between drawing something with the Apple Pencil and seeing it appear on screen. It's not even 2018 yet and we're already hearing a little bit of information about the next iPad and about the next iPhones, but some Something that we only know the very basics about that Bloomberg just reported on is a brand new Apple product that we have never seen before. Obviously every year we're going to hear rumors about the next iPhone and the next iPad and new Macs coming, but something that we have not heard a lot about that Bloomberg confirmed Apple has a very large team working on is an augmented reality headset. This is going to be a little bit different than something like the Samsung Gear VR where you put your phone in there and it's like a mini VR experience but not true VR. It's not going to be like an HTC Vive where you're completely immersed. They are working on something very big related to augmented reality, where you would be able to put on this headset of some sort. We don't know if it would be glasses. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know a lot about how it would work. We know it would have a dedicated screen, special software running on it called ROS for like reality OS, in addition to having a special chip inside just dedicated to making that device function. We don't know what we'd be able to see, how it would work. Apple is reportedly working on integrating the App Store somehow, but we, we don't know a lot. You can hear it in my voice. I don't really know what to say about this product other than Apple is working on it. And I think that's really interesting because yes, we've seen something like the HomePod in recent years, but that's not a breakthrough new product. I would say the last breakthrough new product for Apple as a company was the Apple Watch. And I really like this thing. I wear it every single day. If you're interested in buying this headset, you're going to have to wait a very long time. Bloomberg reports that this won't even be on sale until as early as 2020, which is about two years from the time I'm recording this video. 
it's going to be a while. We don't know a lot about it, and Bloomberg says they don't know a lot either. They just know that Apple is dedicating more engineers than ever to this augmented reality headset experience, and it definitely piques my interest just because this isn't something that you hear a lot of other companies seriously working on. Obviously, we haven't seen the device. We don't know a lot, but I'm thinking ahead in the future. In 2020, are people really going to be willing to put this thing on their head, whether it's just glasses or an actual headset, and walk around and interact with the environment around them? I, I can't see that happening. Even on a college campus where a lot of people love adopting new technology, the idea of buying this Apple product that you're going to wear, not on your wrist, but on, on your face somehow that's going to augment the real world with other stuff, I don't know, it sounds like kind of a crazy idea. I would love to hear your thoughts about this augmented reality headset and whatever Apple could be working on down below. Would you buy something like this or do you still need more details before you make a decision? I think I'm in the latter, I need to hear more. That's all the latest Apple news that you should know. If you guys enjoyed this video, as always, it does help me out. If you take just a second to drop a like down below, I've got new merch out. If you guys wanna get yourself a cool t-shirt like this one right here, link is down below at iAppDataOS.com slash merch. And of course, if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit subscribe. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I'll talk to you in the next video.